Hello. So today we're at a park, and so you hear little kids off in the distance here. Um, and so, uh, but I'm trying to get a location that's uh, feeling emotional. Um, in other words, I'm trying to feel exhilarated by way of uh, this uh, view that we have um, to uh, get us to start talking about uh, this essay uh, from Spontaneous Experience to the Cosmos, Arnie Nace's Phenomenology by a uh, Chilean philosopher, Luca Valera. Okay, and uh, this is getting us to better understand deep ecology by way of the Norwegian philosopher, Arnie Nace, and also touching a little bit on Anna Teresa Tymanichka. Um, and so, first of all, let's just try to understand what phenomenology is. Uh, phenomenology is a philosophical method by which we're understanding the importance of uh, lived experience. So phenomenology is a way that we work to uh, emphasize what's called uh, life experience. And so this way of understanding life experience is a uh, understood relationally. So that's what um, uh, Valera opens up with in terms of how it is that he's understanding um, Arnie Nace's uh, deep ecology as um, relational ontology. So ontology basically is the study of being and it's a metaphysical understanding that's uh, situating our uh, thinking to get us to focus on how it is that we're understanding our being in the world. So that's the easiest way to understand that. And so to understand our being in the world is to understand it as related and likewise a relation to an environment. So in other words, we're not just living in a vacuum. We are bodies living in an environment and that is a symbiotic relationship. Okay, so that might be the best way to understand uh, a spontaneous experience and likewise relational ontology. Okay, and so this is how it is that we're starting to separate away from but recognize still the importance of objectivity. So in other words, um, I s disagree a little bit with the way that Valera sets this up whereby he makes it look as if deep ecology is a rejection of objectivity. And I think that I would be, of, I would be more of the mind of positioning this as suggesting that objectivity is important to understanding deep ecology, but understand that it's, only, it's a limited way. So in other words, scientific objectivity and likewise mathematical understanding is extremely important in the way that we understand our world scientifically, physically, um, etc., mechanistically, materially, so on and so forth, empirically. But the problem is that it's not the only way in which we understand the world. The other ways in which we understand the world beyond a scientific understanding has to have to do with emotion and likewise lived experience. So in other words, mathematical formulas and scientific investigation get us to only one way of understanding the world, whereas phenomenological investigation, phenomenological methodology, phenomenological philosophy is working to get us to understanding ourselves in a lived experience. So understanding that our lived experience is also just as important as our rational understanding. So in other words, that's typically, so when we start talking about uh, personal lived experience, we might even start including the word subjectivity there. That in other words, our subjective understanding is 
the way that we understand the world, that scientific mathematical understanding does not always recognize and tries to get us away from thinking about and seeing as important. In other words, we tend to think that that way of thinking emotionally and personally is not scientific and therefore it's not, wor it's not worth anything. What we're doing with deep ecology, Arnie Nace and Taimanichka is seeing that those elements are important because if we cut that out of our understanding, we are cutting out how it is that we're emplaced in the world. So in other words, when we start thinking about our uh, problems of um, climate change and uh, the, cri the, ec the um, e ecological crisis that we're in, um, what we forget is that part of the problem is that we don't have a very good understanding of how we are placed in the world experientially and emotionally, right? Because that emotional component not only ties into our lived experience, but it also ties into our ethical lives as well, right? That's why um, uh, David Hume placed so much importance on emotion as well. Remember, too, that even the utilitarians were placing importance on emotion. And so our ethical practice in the world is connecting us to the life world only if we choose to recognize it as such beyond just a theory. So in other words, when we study what's called place-based ethics and place-based philosophy, field philosophy, we need to see that as important to the lived experience because we're seeing that emotion is a connection to that lived experience. And if emotion is a connection to the lived experience, that's our connection to the life world. That's our connection to uh, uh, ecology as well, okay? So once we make that recognition, we are seeing the importance of phenomenology and the reason why uh, Arnie Nace is making, uh, is placing so much emphasis on the personal and what we would call uh, Echo Sophie T. So in other words, Echo Sophie T for uh, Arnie Nace, uh, the Norwegian uh, philosopher, uh, also is a way of capturing the way that we're understanding ourselves ethically as a personal commitment in the life world, in a, in a lived experience, okay? So, so in other words, um, this is keying us into uh, spontaneous experience. So spontaneous experience is another, world for, another word for the so-called life world. And so um, it is a better understanding of our relation. And so the pre-theoretical experience of our life as already there is what we're wanting to recognize in terms of phenomenology. That in other, world, in other words, the Lebenswelt is the, the spontaneous lived experience, the so-called truth horizon that is characterized by our spontaneous understanding of our environment as well, okay? So in other words, the emphasis on our relational content is getting us to uh, understand our uh, ontological commitment. In other words, it's getting us to understand that we are beings in the world, and so beings, beings in the world need to see ourselves as contextualized within an environment. And so the only way that we are contextualized in an environment is emotionally and experientially, okay? And likewise, rationally as well. So in other words, we're not cutting out rational um, experience because that's one way that we understand the world, right? Uh, scientifically and mathematically. So um, another way to uh, characterize this also is by way of um, the Polish uh, phenomenologist uh, Tima Nitschka. 
So Tima Nitschke is interesting too um, because she was um, she was a friend of um, Pope John Paul II, and um, uh, he was also a phenomenologist. But what she's trying to get us to emphasize is something that sounds really familiar, right? To see this uh, relationship that we have with the earth as parental, that in other words, um, uh, the earth is our mother. And so once we recognize our earth as our mother, we also recognize that the environment is not only something that we affect, but also something that affects us here. as well. Yeah, so there's little kids running around here. So you're hearing uh, some, some uh, activity. So we're in a lived, the lived experience of this park, right? <laughs> I could be really annoyed with the kids running around, but I'm, 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 I'm thinking, well, this is, this is a part of the lived experience of how it is that we're understanding our placement, right? That it's not just some objective understanding that uh, 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 needs to be thought of as a pure understanding. It's something that has that subjective component that is um, getting us to understand that it's not always going to be something that is clear cut and uh, captured entirely in language, right? So even just trying to capture the lived experience in language is a limitation in and of itself by way of a phenomenological understanding. Unfortunately, that's all we have right now. And so that's what I try to get students to recognize is that when I want them to focus on experience and emotion, all I'm really trying to get you to do is recognize that there's other ways of understanding that are beyond just science and mathematics, right? That our lived position in the world is usually something we ignore, okay? So I'm hoping that this paper is getting us to recognize our place in our uh, uh, world personally and by way of the uh, 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 cosmos as well, right? And so hopefully that, that, that helps and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye class.